Warning, the language in this podcast is some fucked up shit. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by IP Vanish and by Delusions Haberdashery. Because if our country's reverting to the 1800s, our business model has to follow suit eventually. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, I'm Liv. While stuck in quarantine this year, my best friend Talon and I decided to start a podcast where we do nothing but watch and review Cinderella movies. And in doing so, we have somehow also confirmed that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey proto-hominids. It's September 9th, and don't worry, I'm not going to do the whole show solo. I'm No Illusions, and from somewhere in Spain, wherever Eli is at the moment, at Red Town Blue State, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, you'll keep wondering whether you're listening to the archives or not, the news out of Texas will make you wonder whether you're listening to old-timey radio or not, and Christian Children's Entertainment will give us something that's salty and hard to swallow. But first, the diatribe. this weird thing in the Old Testament where every nine chapters or so, the Israelites will stray from the right path, start worshiping other gods, making high places, and, you know, just generally incurring God's wrath. And, and of course, this happens because when you've got an omnipotent character in your book, you have to constantly sideline him. In the actual history that they're often loosely documenting, it's super duper obvious that the Jews didn't have the omnipotent creator of the universe on their side. So much in the same way that Professor X always manages to get himself kidnapped or imprisoned or something before the climax of the story, the Bible's authors always had to write God out by making them all like harumphy about the high places and shit. But the end result is that you've got these crazy forgetful worshippers constantly getting like six years from the last broadly witnessed miracle and going, ah, I bet this golden calf God could kick Jehovah's ass. And, and I remember reading that and thinking it seemed like a really unrealistic way for a group of people to act. But I read that book way back in 2013. And back then, I had nowhere near as much experience trying to convince Democrats to fucking vote. You know, look, basically the whole time we've been doing this show, the shit that just happened in Texas was kind of our worst case scenario. And people wrote to us even before Lucinda started doing This Week in Misogyny, asking why we talked so much about abortion on an atheism show. And our response was always the same. That's the gate that they're marching on. And when the fucking bad guys are at the East Gate, we're going to be inordinately concerned with the eastern side of the city. But a lot of people had grown complacent. They saw Roe v. Wade, they saw all the slings and arrows that it withstood over the last 48 years, and they thought it was impregnable. And then, last week, it came crumbling down, and everybody who's watched them fire one missile after another at it for nearly five decades is looking at this big-ass breach in the wall and going, well, how the fuck did that happen? And, and I look, I get it. 1973 is a long time ago. Barely 20% of Americans are old enough to even remember a pre-Roe world, and, and far fewer are old enough to have been affected by it. And sure, the, the efforts to overturn it started three minutes after the decision was announced, and sure, they've been ongoing ever since, and sure, they're so well-funded that they have their own movies and TV shows and shit, but their failure was so consistent that it seemed inevitable. Our archives can amply demonstrate that their efforts were literally laughable much of the time, but now here we are, wondering how that shit was ever funny. And look, as bad as it is, Texas is just the tip of the iceberg. What Texas proves is that we have a Supreme Court that's willing to choose Jesus over precedent and the Bible over the Constitution. I mean, don't get me wrong, if the only thing they ever did was effectively overturn Roe, it would be plenty bad enough, but that was never the end goal. You know, not, not now that they've managed to shove their wedge issue into the gate, the real goal is going to come pouring through. And that goal is nothing short of theocracy. And, and it's not like I have to retreat to some conspiracy theory to defend that claim, right? It sounds hyperbolic, but they say it out loud to anybody who cares to fucking listen. They want their religious beliefs to take precedent over the will of the majority. In fact, at the extremes, they'll tell you it's the nation's only chance at fucking survival. 
And as insane as it is to try to govern towards the favor of an imaginary deity, that is clearly what's animating five-ninths of the Supreme Court right now, as well as half of America's major political parties. This is going to get worse. We're going to be fighting against the Supreme Court as long as you and I are alive, most likely. Hell, even if we're lucky enough to outlive this iteration of it, I can't imagine anybody listening is going to live long enough to see all their damage undone. And I'm sure if Heath were here, he'd be happy to sum up the reason for that in either six or seven words, depending on whether he uses the contraction or goes with should have. But that's where we are now. Right? There, there, there are two other branches of government that can stand between them and Gilead. But to do that, we need to rely on Democrats voting. And, and I can't think of many propositions I'd be less comfortable staking my future on. Look, I, I'm not trying to depress you, and I apologize if this comes across as hopeless, but I have this terrifying vision of the fucking midterms and all the apathetic bullshit we're bound to hear about the promises Biden didn't keep and the bills this Congress didn't pass and the issues the Democrats didn't prioritize. And I can already hear us screaming, don't you remember 2016? Just the same way that we screamed, don't you remember 2010 back in 2016? And don't you remember 2000 back in 2010? And don't you remember... 1988 and 2000 and don't you remember 1980 and back in 1988 you know maybe i'm wrong you know like maybe it'll be different this time maybe texas will light a fire under our asses maybe we'll have more than six weeks of political memory for once in my fucking lifetime but history sure as hell doesn't suggest it they're talking about your jesus we interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin joining me for headlines tonight is nobody because i'm not here i'm on vacation so is ethan eli but Just because we can't comment on the news doesn't mean we can't do a few headlines. We've actually been stocking up for months now, so we've got some extras that never made it onto the show for you. But first, a word from this week's sponsor, IP Vanish. Hey, Lucinda. What's with the weird closet thing? Skiff, Noah. I'm I'm sorry, skiff? Sensitive compartmented information facility. Like high-level government officials use to ward off electronic surveillance. I see. And why did you have a skiff installed in our house? Well, the targeted ads online are getting way too apropos. I'm pretty sure they've got bugs in the house at this point. Okay, well, Lucinda, if you're worried about advertisers getting your information online, why not try IP Vanish? What's IP Vanish? Screwing the stats all up. What? IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. A VPN is an important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted, what you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is you're doing. I don't know, babe. It sounds expensive. Compared to a skiff? I bought it used from Scott Pruitt. You let it go pretty cheap. Okay, no, that makes sense. But for listeners of our show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off their annual plan, equal to six months free somehow. It's super easy to use. You turn it on with a click of a button, and it runs seamlessly in the background, helping protect you while you're browsing the web. All right, now I'm sold. How do I sign up? Just go to ipvanish.com slash scathing to claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just forty four ninety nine for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and their current promotions, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, that's ipvanish.com slash scathing to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Will do, but I'm keeping a skiff. Are you sure? It it takes up so much space. Given the way the Supreme Court is going, I feel like I'm going to get spied on pretty soon, so... Okay, no, yeah, actually, that makes sense. Yeah. And now, headlines from the past, already in progress. And in bye-bye sexual news. A Christian has once again tried to explain why gay people exist, and until Gotham installs that spotlight with our logo, that is our bat signal here at the Scathing Atheist. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to talk about it. Now, the author in question is the editor of the Gospel Coalition, Joe Carter, who, by the way, looks like a Chia pet trying its very best to act straight. He weighed in on the latest Gallup poll that says 5.6% of Americans now identify as LGBTQ, as opposed to 3.5% in 2012. That's right, everybody. Nine years, 2.1% gayer. (laughs) Nailing it. (laughs) 2.1 2.1 percentage points. The group got 60% bigger. Yeah. There you go. I, I want to use whatever phrasing makes Joe Carter 
extra terrifying. <laughs> That's how it works. 60%. Every gay person from 2012 is now a gay person plus a second gay person with like their legs chopped off at mid thigh and they're coming for you. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> but it's so weird. It's like how it got more socially acceptable to be an atheist. There were suddenly more atheists. Like all those people that weren't atheists and believed in the Christian telling of the <laughs> creation of the universe suddenly stopped believing in God when it became more socially acceptable. It's like that. Right, right then. The yeah. same well, I mean, I think the atheism thing was mostly our podcast. No, oh, okay, right. Yeah, right. yeah, that was us. That was us. Yeah. You're welcome. But of course, Joe Carter knows the real reason behind this change. Social contagion. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. Quote, he'll explain. Social contagion. <laughs> Quote, social contagion and normalization of homosexuality have combined to make the younger, highly susceptible and credulous generations believe they should identify as LGBTQ. What? Okay, he won't really explain. He'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> social contagion is the only adequate explanation for why so many younger people, especially women, claim to be bisexual no. or by curious in such a short time. Yeah, the only possible explanation. <laughs> yeah, that tolerance contagion that we created in a Chinese lab is finally spreading. Our plan yeah, is we're finally it. coming together. Yeah, I just, I, I certainly can't imagine any other reason that more and more women would find a life devoid of male companionship appealing. Why don't you explain <laughs> it to us more, Joe? <laughs> Tell us what the ladies are thinking some more. <laughs> oh, but he does manage to get wronger. It's true. It's not just social contagion, he explains. It's also porn. Of course it is. Really listen to this quote. I'm interested. He's got my, he has my attention. Go. This is, this is really That's, good. That is your key word, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Alexa to my smart speaker. Porn <laughs> exactly. to Boobs. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to say something. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm attention. Yeah. Quote, for years, the most popular search term for pornography for women has been lesbian. This is a bit of a misnomer, however, since most of the porn produced for this category is by women who also produce heterosexual <laughs> porn. Wait, and wait, porn. Why he doesn't know how porn works? <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah, okay, look, lesbian porn is way less likely to suddenly have some weird, objectifying, degrading shit pop up midway through your masturbation, dude. That's it. I solved it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's all confused. He's just like, no, this makes any sense, because Strippers love me. They do. They love me. I don't even know. This is so weird. So funny. Social contagion. Yeah. So there you have it. Just to sum up his points here. The young and credulous are getting tricked into gayness mm -hmm. by the lesbian porn they watch yep. mm -hmm. because of how straight they are. Mm -hmm. That's his That's his idea. That's his point. Uh, by the way, side note, Joe. Hey, buddy, if you can get tricked into gayness, you're gay. Yeah. I mean, look, good for you. Live and let live. But. You're a gay person. And don't get me wrong. I'll pretend to be tricked for Thomas Smith from opening arguments because he needs to stay married. But we both know what's going on, Joe. We both know what's going on. Next up in headlines, we have a story about Marjorie Taylor Green. <laughs> you might remember her as the QAnon supporting member of Congress who's banned from all committees. Congress decided she's so stupid and vile that her entire job is being present like <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard is not. <laughs> you also might remember her as Ann Coulter after being sanded down for safety. Got all the <laughs> yeah. sharp mm -hmm. edges. Child safe Ann Coulter. <laughs> it's an OSHA thing. Well, despite being removed from any congressional topic with a worded title, she still managed to confirm that her existence is a hate crime by herself and the entire Republican Party. Yeah. When she posted an anti-trans bigot sign on the wall outside her office for the express purpose of making Democrat Congresswoman Marie Newman see it. Because Newman's office is across the hall and Newman's daughter is trans and Marjorie Taylor Greene's a piece of garbage. They're bullying people's kids now. Yeah. Right. Like if you're a Republican right now, you got to be gearing up for the moment where you're going to have to defend competitive puppy kicking. Yep. Right, like, like, like the pundits on the right have at least dusted off their pro puppy kicking <laughs> arguments at this point. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you put that sign where my trans child could see it, they wouldn't have to kick you out of Congress. They wouldn't have to. It's, 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 <laughs> I have no idea what Eli means by that. So, in fairness to Marjorie Taylor, 
who happens to share our first name with Eli's dog. <laughs> in <laughs> fairness to Madge Taylor, it was the Democrats who started it. They started uh, the fight. And in fairness to my dog, she is named after a Game of Thrones character. Well, yeah, who, um, who raped a child. Yeah, not when she was named. Not when she was named. Good work. So the conflict never would have happened if Democrats didn't try to pass a bill that made people equal under the law. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about the Equality Act. And when you make people equal under the law, especially when that includes people of any gender identity or any sexual orientation, that is a direct attack on the God of the universe. Sure. So after the House voted to fuck God and pass the bill, Marie Newman decided to put up the transgender flag outside her office in solidarity. And that's when Madge Taylor Green responded with her bigot spite sign. It reads, there are two genders, male and female. Trust the science, exclamation. Yeah, yeah. Science. Jewish space laser lady would like everybody to take the science a little more seriously. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and she got the fucking pseudoscientific argument wrong. Right? Shocking. The, the pseudoscientific <laughs> argument is that there are only two sexes, not yeah, genders. Right. You lost her. Right? That's like if you believed that Eastern Standard Time is the only time zone, and then you put a sign outside your door that says there is only one clock to prove <laughs> it. <laughs> Trust the clock science, idiots. Read a clock. <laughs> so obviously, Madge Taylor Green is disgusting, but we did get to watch her fail miserably at her bare bones job like she's a cop on desk duty right now. Yes, we did. Yes, we she did. started by arguing against the bill, claiming that it would protect pedophiles and destroy women's rights. Apparently, she's a big feminist right now. She's <laughs> big into <laughs> yeah. women's rights. Regardless, she knows the Republicans don't have the votes to block it. So she tries to adjourn Congress. What the <laughs> fuck was that? <laughs> and everyone was like, no, right. <laughs> because of the votes that you were just thinking about before you panicked and tried to call a timeout. Yeah, you obviously knew the states. So yeah, turns out the blue votes add up the same for a bill itself and timeouts on that bill by <laughs> uh, curses. Curses. Yeah. So bottom line, fuck your face. Fuck your stupid claymation and culture face in the face. <laughs> yeah. And in lowest shaman denominator news tonight. It took, that's, thank that's you. I'm super proud of that. One. I woke up in the middle of the night with that one just in my head. I was like, oh, this is Shaman Denominator. I'm sorry. Yes. sorry, sorry I, this sorry, is just really baby. good. I'm writing sorry, this down. Sorry, Loki. <laughs> yep. Lucinda, Lucinda, wake back up. Remember, Shaman, it's really good. I'll tell I you. I didn't tomorrow. have a pen, so you have to. <laughs> I'm just going to call my. Leave a text for you. All right. So, yeah, but it turns out that laws sometimes still apply to religious people, even if they're conservative. Huh. Uh, as, as, as long as they're not Christian. Right. Um, okay. And we learned that this week when a judge denied the request of loyal order of the water buffalo slash Braveheart crossover character Jacob Chansley, the <laughs> self-described like QAnon <laughs> shaman. Right. He looks like he's just trying to get Barney and Fred to fight in this war. Right. <laughs> and, and of course, this is the guy that uh, we all remember for managing to look like a ridiculous asshole, even in a crowd of rabid Trump supporters. Impressive. And for somehow simultaneously physically embodying both the reason we should take Trump's attempts at insurrection seriously and the reason we can't. <laughs> it was like Cirque du Soleil insurrection in his audition. <laughs> right. I, I honestly thought he was going to do a silks routine on the Senate floor when I first yes. saw it. All that time. Yes. Fucking awesome. So anyway, so his lawyers asked last month that he be released from prison while awaiting trial because, you know, religion stuff. <laughs> and on Monday, U.S. District Judge Royce C. Lamberth officially told him to go fuck himself. Good, which it actually looked like he might start doing during a self-esteem. <laughs> also, for the record, just in case this ever applies, I am a devout no consequences for my actions ist. So, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, that I, I know that about you, for you have been for quite some time. <laughs> All right. So the crux of his request was that his shamanic beliefs, which is a fucking hodgepodge of shitty made up by sowing half understood shamanic religions to two thirds understood conspiracy theories, don't allow him to take vaccines. Liar. And because of that, and the resultant safety protocols at the jail that he's in, his lawyer claims that meaningful, unmonitored communication with his client isn't possible. That's not why, though. Well, right. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's All right. Stupid. So, but yeah, right. We're going to sentence him to be educated? Come on now. 
Now, apparently this vaccine dumbassery is not new. Chansley was actually discharged from the Navy in 2007 for refusing to take an anthrax vaccine. But the fact that he's been stupid for a while didn't impress the judge. He issued a 32 page scathing opinion that includes the words, quote, to put it plainly, the defendant's religious objections to the covid-19 vaccine is not a relevant reason, let alone a compelling reason to grant his temporary release. End quote. In fact, he pointed out that despite meaningful communication supposedly being impossible, Chansley and his fucking lawyer were on goddamn 60 minutes last week. <laughs> also, if he felt safe with a giant mob carrying out an armed insurrection without wearing a mask, yeah. I think he can handle jail with a mask. Fuck you. Man, it's too bad there's nothing about being tortured in Islam, right? Abu Ghraib would have worked itself out on Fox News in no time. Right? <laughs> Whoa! Now, I should emphasize that the most newsworthy thing about this story is that it's newsworthy. Right. So it's worth remembering that his religious freedom was enough to force the prison to go out and buy all organic food for the motherfucker, <laughs> even though his religion is just shit he's making up as he goes along. And organic food is a vacuous marketing distinction. Yeah. For the record, if I ever to go to jail, my religion dictates that I can only eat keys to my cell. This is very serious. <laughs> no, <laughs> very I've, serious. I've known that about you for a very long time. You've said that for a long time. Sincerely held yep. keys. Sincerely held. <laughs> in fact, look, so even in this distinction, the judge goes out of his way to emphasize that, you know, he will grant special consideration to the defendant because of religious bonus rights, just not this special consideration. In response to the ridiculous claim by Chancellor's lawyer that he isn't the flight risk because he's very, very religious and would just never do such a thing. The judge <laughs> says those arguments are insufficient as guarantors that will show up for his next court appearance, but adds that they are, quote, possibly relevant at sentencing, end quote. <laughs> Why? Absolutely not. I thought I was liking this judge for a second. <laughs> I know you're very, very religious, so you get to die in jail, huh? Right. That's fun. <laughs> you go to heaven? Or get reincarnated, whatever mood you're whatever. in today. Come back as an organic <laughs> potato. And next up in headlines. In Lorraine in the Membrane News. <laughs> Such a good pun, right, Eli? Thank really you. good pun. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a story about Christian Wright talking head and patron saint of calling the cops about blacking in a public park, Deanna <laughs> Lorraine. She recently declared that she won't get the COVID vaccine, even if Jesus Christ himself gets it. He gets stuck with all kinds of shit. Yeah. Which is uh, good news or bad news, depending on how many lives you're willing to sacrifice to see Deanna Lorraine die of COVID, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Everybody's got to pick their number. That's a high number. So during a recent episode of 17. Deanna Lorraine Live on, Par did you say 17? 17. For that, that's, that's, I, but that, it's not how many would you physically kill. It was how many would you like be okay with seeing die? Oh, it's higher now, right? Higher than 17. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll take the over on that too. Okay. <laughs> so during a recent episode of Deanna Lorraine live on Periscope, that's her thing now, I guess. <laughs> she announced that she's been dressing up in medical scrubs, pretending to be a doctor or a nurse. What? And going into businesses without a mask to argue with people about the science of COVID pretending like she's an authority because of her scrubs. How did it get worse? And and yet there's some conservative out there going, oh, I see, but y'all don't mind when Jill Biden does it. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole murdery stunt was her response to Governor Greg Abbott of Texas proclaiming that COVID is it's all taken care of now. Mm -hmm. And he lifted the mask mandate and he declared that everything is fully open in Texas now. Yep. Apparently she lives in Texas now. She used to be in California. And this was her way of celebrating her viral freedom. Here's the exact words from Deanna Lorraine, proudly describing how she became a medical expert by dressing up all sciency. Quote, I'm wearing a nurse's outfit because I'm going around and I'm videotaping me going to different stores, restaurants, department stores, bars, etc., and videotaping people's reactions to me not wearing a mask and having them try to educate a doctor or a nurse on how masks save lives. Tell me, a doctor or a nurse, how masks somehow save lives. Apparently she identified herself as a doctor or nurse when she was doing this stunt. I don't okay. quite understand that. That's weird that you said you're one or the other of two occupations. Anyway, <laughs> continuing. You go ahead, Walmart store clerk. You go ahead, grocery store bagger. And you tell me something I don't know already. You try to school me on something that I went to school for. But you didn't. End quote. 
Go to, no, she did. she did not. <laughs> that is correct. Did you, Thank you. Do you think that when you put on that <laughs> outfit, you just get those powers? She's <laughs> insane. Yes, she's she ran for public office. Just for the record about her schooling, she went to school for a degree in, quote, according to her LinkedIn, organizational communications, public relations, journalism, and psychology. What? She, she has a BA in... Whatever the fuck that department has, that has all of those things. <laughs> so, look, I, okay, so I'm sorry. I know this isn't the point, but um, did she say videotaping? <laughs> <That's> videotaping. <laughs> yes. When is she? Did her video have like <laughs> January 1st, 2000 Chirons in the bottom left? <laughs> okay, but this stunt proves the opposite of what yes! her point is, yes! right? Yes, it does. She's dressing up as someone with expertise. To pretend expertise agrees with her <laughs> to prove the point that all the doctors and nurses who actually are doctors and nurses disagree. She might as well walk around with a New York Times that she wrote over in Sharpie that says COVID is no big deal and be like, I'm sorry, grocery store clerk. Are you arguing with the New York Times? <laughs> <laughs> well, she might as well do that in the New York Times headquarters and be like, right. are you arguing with the Sharpie over your th <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> And just a little extra context about Deanna Lorraine, in case anyone missed it, she announced last September that women should all be voting for Donald Trump in the general election because he's an alpha male. Yep. Just a reminder, less than a week later after she said that, that alpha male needed to be injected with a muddled Dutch fetus just to keep him alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lost by 7 million votes to beta Joe Biden. Right. That's what happened soon after. Yeah. You might also remember Lorraine for getting 1.8% of the vote in the nonpartisan primary to represent California District 12 <laughs> in the House last year. And she also famously spent her entire career not being a doctor or a nurse. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the most important yeah. thing. To, okay, to but that here. said, we now know that Lorraine is okay with impersonating medical personnel to make a political point. So, next time she has a doctor's appointment, I have a hilarious <laughs> prank in mind that I think we're all going to agree is very deserved. I think we're going to need to get it on Betamax, too. Yeah. We're gonna <laughs> it. No, man, it she will can't be the jaw. captured. <laughs> And on that note, we're going to close out the headlines for the night. Pre-recorded Heath, pre-recorded Eli. Thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll see just how unfamiliar Christians are with the way that books behave. In the world of entertainment, the lowest form of everything is the Christian version. And with a few notable exceptions, the second lowest form of everything is the children's version of that thing. So... It stands to reason that the absolute nadir of art will be found in Christian children's entertainment, which we will prove once again with another edition of God Awful Minis. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Salty the Songbook Kids Praise 2. It's a Christian kids musical show with I'm pretty sure a white power theme. I yes. think you're right. Mm -hmm. Or, or it is an MK Ultra brainwashing movie to make me into a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> or both. Yeah, actually, could be. It's, it's hard to say. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you loved Barney the dinosaur, but you wish they kept filming after his psychotic break, <laughs> you will love this mini. Also, I know we don't usually do this on the minis, but it's very important to me. I'm going to go with best worst subplot that only Heath is following. There are some letters that will Dial. follow mm. <laughs> and do tremendous grievance to my friend Ethan right throughout this children's production. They don't make any sense. It's we'll fine. get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're open. Here's the one that gets me right off the bat. We're going to open up on enough microphone hiss to make a snake cringe. And then we're told everything we need to know about the production value and the time it takes for that logo to pop up. Oh, that sweet, sweet, salty Kids Co. logo. Oh, uh, no, a question. Did all the real instruments vanish from 1969 to 2001? Did we get them back for 9-11? It was all synth before then. <laughs> yeah, we used a lot of synthesizers at this point in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we call them synthesizers. All right. So, yeah, so we get the intro song, which we've seen before. This is the, the song wherein 
fucking salty the songbook, which is a dude in a giant Bible costume, goes pied pipering his way through a neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. So pro tip. If a guy in a mascot uniform is walking down the street singing, skipping down the street singing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't let your small child run along with the mascot guy. Yeah, always a bad move. You, you just, you got to know that. Jesus. I got to say, I was trying to get some of the lyrics on this song, so I turned on the YouTube closed captioning. It was amazing. <laughs> One of my favorite things that I've ever read. And they, they have no fucking idea, but yeah. So all the kids are skipping along, and, and, and of course, you're supposed to be like, wow, Salty sure does appeal to a... A lot of children from diverse ethnic and cultural backgrounds, right? <laughs> I also, I forgot so many things about this theme that I love. The first is, it just seems like several children's shows are trying to start independently at the same time. The kids are singing a song, Salty singing a song, there's background trombones <laughs> yeah. doing their own thing. <laughs> I also forgot that they include in the theme song the part where Salty almost eats shit because he's in a giant book costume in the forest. Well, they're also the one where he runs down the slide. Yeah, right? that's where I expect it because like I have seriously considered buying this IP just so we could reshoot this intro, have him eat shit on the way down that slide and just splice it into all the old shows. Yes, <laughs> they can't stop you legally. Yeah, Salty stops singing the theme entirely at one point because... Yeah, he's walking in giant mascot shoes and comes so close to eating it a bunch of times. <laughs> I was rooting so hard. Yeah, he's just he stops singing and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, the kids continue yeah. the fucking song. Yep. I'm a little shut the fuck up. I'm trying to concentrate. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the lyrics here, I'm a little praiser and a hallelujah raiser. Yep. And I stand about three feet tall. And God damn it, this got stuck in my head for like uh, conservatively two years when we watched this last time. Yeah. And it's yeah. Happening again right now. It's in there. Yep. Dear listener. Do not watch this video. Do not watch it. I've been <laughs> Do doing it own sake. ever since. It's Do it. terrifying. Salty is your God for now. your own sake. I switched it to six feet tall in my head and I'm singing about myself now. It's really bad. <laughs> so, okay. So all the little boys and girls pile into Salty's worship workshop. Hey, pro tip. If the singing mascot has a workshop expressionist lair, <laughs> don't go inside. <laughs> Okay, I just want to point out that the outside of the workshop is very clearly what they let some church group paint, and it looks like fucking dog shit. Everything else is a children's show shit, but this one looks fucking garbage. It's pretty awful, yeah. So they all come in. We're reminded that he has a giant, like, disembodied nose on his wall. <laughs> it's the nose at all. Uh -huh. Every time we see it, I just want them to be like, oh, no, it's the international Jew. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but no, it's, it's the nose at all. <laughs> Is it's my goddamn nightmare. Every single visual thing. I, I hate it so much. It's very, very unpleasant. Don't watch this. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the nose sneezes, teehee. And Salty says, are you not feeling well? And he's like, no, I just wanted to remind you guys to obey the Lord. It's like, what the fuck does sneezing have to do? So he sneezes to get your attention? Dick move. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but just then we hear some thunder and lightning outside. Now, at, at this point, everybody puts on a raincoat, even though they're inside. The ending of this is going to be as bad as you're fearing it might be. Um, You well? have no idea what the ending to this is going to be. <laughs> seriously, seriously, take a moment, podcast listener. I, do, I know I tell you to do this occasionally. Be like, hey, what's the most tone deaf, <laughs> thought blind <laughs> thing they could end this episode on? You don't have it. Really go there. You, you don't, don't have, have it. it. You're not going far enough. Actually, I promise you do you. have it. You just don't think you have it. You're like, well, <laughs> it couldn't be, but you've got it. You do, you do have it. All right. So, yeah. But Salty has a song about rain falling, and, and he wants to sing that with everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's a story about a wise man and a foolish man, and he decides to cast that for a little skit during the song, and he's like, okay, who wants to be the wise man? Who wants to be the foolish man? Girls, hands down. Hands down, all the girls. <laughs> this actually gets way worse if we have lady characters from the Bible. Oh, yeah, no do. shit. <laughs> so who wants to be chopped up and mailed all over Israel? Yeah. <laughs> So we get our, our first song or second song after the theme, and it's about how wise people build their houses on rocks and foolish people build their houses on sand. Yeah. Which, I mean, I get what they're going for, but don't build your house on a fucking rock. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, but they they think it's a good idea, and they build their little house in this skit not on the rock they have. It's just nope. next to a rock. Yep. Yeah. 
Still, though, they're very clearly like, huh? Huh? Did Barney tell you about what makes the best foundations for Bronze Age housing? No. <laughs> Take that, Barney. <laughs> doesn't know shit. It's why. Yeah. So the good kid builds a house on a on a rock, and and then Salty dumps water on that kid's hat. Right? He's got a little pitcher, and he just dumps some water on their head for no discernible reason. Right. Yeah, and the, the the lyric is like the floods came up because the water came down, or whatever. So the flood is like flooding this entire house, and it's going to kill the person because if they had put it on sand, it would have fucking drained, and they would have been fine. Right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But now we cut to the foolish kid who's building his house on the sand, and and then salty dumps something on him too. Okay. Um. Yeah, he dumps what we will later learn is vanilla pudding. On this literally trail. vanilla fucking Yikes. puddings, but uh, yeah, I mean, short of pina colada mix, that is uh, that's a bunch of cum on that kid's cum. Yes, it's cum. Yep, it's cum. And he's like, "How's that taste, buddy? Try it out. Try." It. And the kid is licking yellowish white goop off his own face, like <laughs> yellow <laughs> goo from 1981 as a prop is going into this child. <laughs> Who is being poisoned right now? Oh, yeah. I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah. All the other views on this video on YouTube are for perverts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay. And then they like, so, so the point is, is that this kid didn't build his house on a firm foundation. And so it's going to, going to fall down. But after they dump this fucking stage sperm all over this kid's face, then they tear his little house down. It's so awful. Okay. But this is possibly one of my favorite moments in the movie. Salty has to kick it over. And the act, there's so much rage in that moment of freedom from the actor. <laughs> he kicks it so hard. You see the kids all get scared and go, because he's like, oh, I went to Juilliard. And they're like, what, Salty? And he's like, I mean, I have a little praiser and it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, the song goes um, on to say, like, so build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, for one, imagined his legs sticking out from under it like Dorothy just landed a house on it, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, like, exactly. What do you mean exactly by that? But, yeah, so then we finish this up by zooming in on the yellow custard shit that's on this kid's face. But then they're going to try out some wordplay now that that song's done. And that goes as well as you'd expect. Oh, there's so much here. This opening pun sequence, it's what I imagine Heath's hell is, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're not puns. They're <laughs> nope. So he's got a musical note on the wall on like a poster and Salty's like, so this used to be a yellow note, but somebody pushed it through a horn and now it's a blue note. And, and it's so the note itself is the color blue to go with that pun, I guess. And then he's like, hey, press it. See what happens. And we hear it, and it, it's not a note. It's six different notes, four mm -hmm. different tones. <laughs> but then I was like, okay, of yeah, one of those could be considered a blue note. Act. And then I, <laughs> I was mad at myself. I was like, fuck, they actually got that right. And I was trying to correct the music. <laughs> and and while he's doing his little wordplay thing, he drops some very dark reflections in here, one of which is that he has a daughter, which implies that Salty the Psalm book has and can fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, no, that was because because he told his daughter to take some notes, and that's why there's notes missing. It's so bad. At one point, though, there's two kids that are swinging on a couple of, like, eighth notes that are connected by a bar or whatever. But when you first see it, it really kind of looks like a pair of testicles that they're swinging on, right? Like, they, they have Very to really, like, much back so, yeah. off to a certain angle before you realize that's not what they're going for. Yeah, they're swing notes. Swing is a music it's swing notes. what the they fuck is it because i know what a blue note is and a sharp and a flat note. what the fuck is a swing note anyway yeah a note isn't swing it, it, by definition the there rhythm. would need to be <laughs> other notes to make it possibly swing related in some way yes yeah so yeah th this goes on for as long as i can think of different eternity note words <laughs> yeah and also we should point out that there's like when when he makes a joke there's these disembodied mouths that'll come God up and laugh so that you the laughing tell. mouths mm -hmm. this is my clockwork orange torture <laughs> this is this is what i was talking about with the mk ultra thing it's terrifying yeah no it's a disturbing image but they keep doing it over and over again no 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 we made a funny trust us we yeah. did a funny it's, thing. it's the applause sound of laugh cues i was like you know what i, I think i'm gonna murder kennedy i think i am gonna murder <laughs> kennedy. thought it over yeah 
But this ultimately all leads into him saying, yes, when you're making music, you can choose any note that you want. But one thing you should always choose is to follow our leader, Jesus. Yeah. That's the segue. I wrote as a joke in my notes, speaking of choices, homosexuality. And I was so close. So <laughs> close, my friends. <laughs> So, yeah, so we could all one choice we could all make is to obey and stop choosing for ourselves. But um, I don't think they they pick up on that. And one kid is like, hey, does that are you suggesting that we could play follow the leader? Because that would be funny. He's like, you can do that for two seconds and then I'm back on Jesus. OK, <laughs> he comes out. He's like, touch your heads and salty fucking side tackles them out of the way. He's like, speaking of leaders. We need to follow Jesus, who is our leader. Yeah, exactly. You've had your four seconds of fun. It's time to supplicate ourselves before the Lord some more. <laughs> so now they, they're going to sing a song about following Jesus, which is also what the fucking last two songs were about. But OK, mm -hmm. this is also where they introduce the letter blocks. What? OK, <laughs> <laughs> the, there's the blocks that have letters on the side. And right now we see them. L-L-R-A-S-R. -R. There's a heart on a block after that. And then also the letter I. And I was like, I must figure this out. I don't know why. Why do I care so much? But I was like, is this the Konami code? Left, left, right? No? Okay, it's no, not the Konami code. No. <laughs> so then I'm trying to spell stuff out. I'm doing jumbles. It's like, okay, L-R, like Sound left, right. L-R heart liars. That doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> God. So, yeah, so they sing their little song. Uh, the lyrics are, follow the leader, Jesus Christ, the king, follow the leader. Everybody sing. And that's how hard they're trying. Yeah. And they keep doing all the like, God commands, but they don't do any of the fun ones. They just do like read your Bible. I was like, where's the scare away birds before you take the eggs or you'll be put to death? Huh? Cowards. <laughs> I don't remember any of this because I was just like, if they don't explain these goddamn letters, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> so, if you take out your right headphone, you can hear Heath's 20 minute commentary on whether or not these letters I'm smell worse. a glass. I'm doing math. <laughs> well, so, OK. And then during this song, one of the lyrics is about how sometimes in life you'll fall down, but Jesus will pick you back up. And when he says that, he pushes like, again, violently shoves two kids to the ground so hard. I'm pretty sure one of them is the same one that got the facial earlier. And I yeah. think Salty just fucking hates that kid. Yeah, 100%. That's his real son and he's working <laughs> through some shit. <laughs> or he's like flirting with that kid and like pushing him down. On okay, the yeah, yeah, right, sure. right, yeah. I love to because the kids, they're, as they're doing this song, they keep doing this thing where the kids are standing on the blocks and they'll walk around on a, in a circle and get back on the blocks. At one point, the kids forget how the blocking goes and they just stand in the background arguing about it for like 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> but the show must go on, I guess. They probably just wanted to understand what the letters meant. Whatever. That's the argument yeah. they're having. Yeah, right, right. So that song wraps up and we cut to Salty counting down for hide and seek. Oh, yeah. these kids fucking suck at hide and seek, by the way. They're all yeah. just standing like next to a lamp. Yeah, no, they're terrible. Also, they just one more pro tip. Whip those kids' asses. If the mascot with an expressionist lair that you're now in closes his eyes for 10 seconds, run the fuck away. You yeah. 10 seconds now, you <laughs> yeah. go away. You hide further. But we can't, but the kids can't get a single goddamn game in around this preachy motherfucker because just as they're trying to play hide and seek, Buford Bugle Lamp shows up and he's like, well, you know, hide and seek sure is fun, but you can't hide from the judgment of God. I, we <laughs> cannot be clear that this is without exaggeration the message. They will introduce four puppets yep. and all four puppets will be like, no, you cannot hide from God. He is omniscient. He sees everything you do. He knows everything you think. There is no hiding from him. Yeah. And this is the second time that the kids were just about, they were starting a game that yeah. they were enjoying for three seconds. And then it was like, fuck you, God, Jesus, you can't hide. He's coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. Never play hide and seek with Jesus. He can see through the fucking holes in his hands when he covers his eyes, people. Hello. He's yep. cheating. Yeah. This is also where we meet Bertha Bureau. Okay. Yes. So, um. We didn't describe anywhere near close to the most offensive thing that's happened in this scene yet or this entire <laughs> nope. movie show. So, yeah, we meet Bertha Bureau and she says, my maiden name was Venation. 
birth of a nation, right? Right. Birth of a nation. They made a birth of a nation pun, uh, presumably to entertain the parents that they knew they were selling to. I really wanted the camera to cut over to like one of the black kids who's just like, yikes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there, there is a little black girl there. I wanted her to just destroy this bureau with an axe <laughs> immediately after this comment. Yeah, to be clear, they just made a joke about a movie that was so racist that the 19 teens called it out for being too racist. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. But yeah, but just as we're all trying to catch our breath from that, the concertina twins puppets come in and just so like, what we're trying to say is Jesus knows when you touch your dick. That's oh. what we want you to know. My wife was furious that they besmirched the fine name of concertinas everywhere. I was distracted <laughs> from the rest of the scene because we she did like a fucking Ibsen-esque monologue about the vengeance she would have on Salty the Songbook. <laughs> yeah, but of course they have a song about not playing hide and seek with Jesus. Oh my, this song is what a clown should sing as he chases you through a hall of mirrors with a kitchen knife. <laughs> It's such a terrifying song. I wanted one kid to mess up, get hit by lightning, and then they all just start like crying and keep singing. God loves you. <laughs> if I wrote this song as a parody, people would be like, little broad, Eli, little broad. Yeah. Also, just a reminder, we're about to hear a song from Bertha Bureau, nay, Birth of a Nation. So I was <laughs> like, uh, are they going to do a minstrel show? I'm not <laughs> surprised if they do a minstrel show. And then you look at Salty and you're like, okay. He's, oh, wow. He's a fucking yep. color switch away. He's all blue. He's a color switch away from literally minstrel show makeup with like the eyes all yep. colored out and white is gross. Guaranteed there's a first version of Salty where he is just in blackface and he's like, what? Bibles are black. And then, you know, an angry, teary fight later, they settled on blue. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. Oh, God. Yeah. So the, this song goes on. Like it says, don't play hide and seek from the Lord that loves you like 10 to the 23rd fucking times. And the last line of it is you can't hide from God, which is way more of a threat than kids songs usually end on. In my experience, yeah, I'm God and I'm fucking everywhere. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Boop. Kids song. Yeah. It's yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> okay. And so when that song ends, another little girl comes up kind of seemingly a little disturbed about how God watches her pee. Yep. Right. And she's like, uh, <laughs> does God watch me poop? And Salty's like, oh yeah, that is special. That is special. <laughs> does God collect bulk metadata? I don't, yeah, right. I don't feel comfortable. Would it make you feel any better if your friends dressed up as living flesh oh, and threatened you that'd specifically? Be great. That'd okay, be great. well then, good news. Yeah, another great masterful segue. A bunch of the kids just show up and they're like, hey, Salty, apropos of nothing, I dressed as an eye, she dressed as a hand, he dressed as a foot, and they dressed as an ear. Do you have a song about that maybe okay <laughs> there's a kid dressed as a giant disembodied eyeball here yes and the eyeball costume is enormous and way too fucking heavy this kid is his yes. neck is about to snap for yes. the rest yes. of the he song. can't breathe we watch him die in the costume <laughs> <laughs> this is a snuff film also, there was a block with a letter E now, too. And I was like, okay, L-L-R-A-S-R, -S heart I-E. It's a heart ralliers. That's, that's nothing. See, I what? started using the heart as a blank earlier, and I got ralliers. But yeah, yeah. Ooh. So yeah, but luckily, it just so happens that Salty does have a disembodied ear song. But first, they'll have to perform the invocation of the circle of imagination. <laughs> <laughs> they have to teleport for the song. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently they have a circle of imagination that'll teleport them anywhere in the world. So they go to the park down the street. Yep. And then they sing this song. Now this song, this is a like, don't tell mommy what happened here today song, right? No. Mm, the Pope yes. scratched this song out. <laughs> okay, that's, okay. So the, the, the eyeball comes up and the, the song lyrics are like, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Yeah, be careful, little ears, what you hear. How the fuck do you control eyes and ears seeing and hear? Like, what are you going to do there? How do you, it's in the, I was like, oh, maybe homeschool is what they're going for. Yeah, here. right, yeah, right, <laughs> right. But the moral seems to be see no evil, hear no evil thus far. And then it goes, because there's one of them dressed in a foot and it's like, be careful, little feet where you go. And I'm like, that's not a God thing. Like atheists have to do that 
too. Like well, anybody can step on a fucking Lego. Come on. Yeah. And yeah. then and then they they have don't touch hot things with the hand. Well, yeah. Be careful, little hands. What you do. And and I'm thinking this. Okay, this is a masturbation thing. But they show the hand with a match. So <laughs> some depressed kid walks over in a penis costume. Just do it, Kyle. Just do it. <laughs> hey, I don't think the match disqualifies it from being a masturbation. <laughs> okay, all right. No, fair, fair. I don't yeah. need to kink shame. <laughs> so, Mine's also, very raspy. We should point out that the fucking that the hand costume is so fucking bad that if it wasn't for the song, you would not know what body part they were going. Like that, you'd be like, "Oh, and you're the." gallbladder you're the turkey yep. made of dicks yeah <laughs> right. yeah, yeah exactly also just a reminder these little ears and eyes that we're talking about they're hearing and seeing birth of a nation from their parents vcr yep, they, they are right that is true right okay now i can see why you want them to be careful okay so that song fizzles out and we we masterfully segue into the next scene by having a kid run to salty and say Hey, Salty, what's that thing from the next scene? Yeah, he says, what's that thing with the purple pipes? And I wanted so badly for Salty to be like, oh, that's my bone collection. <laughs> but it's so much worse. It, it's, it's worse. The, it's worse. It's the quote. I shit you not. Purple pipe sprays organ. Oh. Exact words. And also 100% what this guy has named his penis. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's named his penis, Purple Pipe Praise Organ, and he's worked it into a kid's show now. Yep. A kid's show that has already had a birth of a nation joke. I'm starting to think that they just did this to <laughs> fuck with us. Like they saw podcasting coming somehow all those years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But so he's got this organ where every different key is a different sound effect. So now it actually sounds like a podcast. <laughs> And then that rolls, of course, into another song about loving Jesus a lot. Okay. And the only thing I want to point out about this song, actually, I have so many things. But the first thing I want to point out about this song is that they give this one little girl a solo. And she is, for some reason, made up like a coroner's first try. <laughs> like like grandma's <laughs> lipstick for your TV show. It's terrifying. Yeah. The, the, okay. So the little girl that stood out to me is because at one point in this song, they, they all do a bunch of leapfrog. And there's one kid that's taking it. This one little girl is taking it Heath levels of serious. She is so <laughs> competitively leaping up. She just like starts throwing her arms up in victory. I expect her to start taking a shit on some other kid's chest at the end of it. It was amazing. <laughs> okay. I was taken in by the somersaulting. They all do those shitty somersault on your neck that you could do if i tried to do a somersault like this i'd be in the hospital for yeah. eight years yeah uh the benefits of youth and i was focused on the blocks with l u and r now <laughs> <laughs> so it's l l r a s r i e l u r heart and i was like i i heart lulls rarer that's nothing I got so angry. Heart <laughs> surreal, real. Oh, Those are close. three words. Close. Yeah. <sighs> and then there was a Y on the side of one of the blocks, and I gave up. There's yeah, that's unknowns, that's apparently. the thing is that once you start flipping around, you have, have too six. many permutations. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of them have symbols like hearts, apparently. But yeah. And this song, of course, ends on the line, and I quote, suffer ye the little children to come unto me. Yep. The only thing scarier than Bible verses is Bible verses said by children. Sung by children. Even worse. Yeah. There was apparently a rule in this song that each verse had to be scarier than the last one. <laughs> and also, like, I know they're kids, but the last kid who does his little solo sings like when you stretch out the balloon as it's deflating. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, I feel bad for him, too, because... They kept giving this one kid, this is the, the vanilla pudding kid yep. too. Mm -hmm. And they kept giving him lines in the song that are way too long. So it was like, it was like watching the guy at the karaoke bar learn on the fly that Hey Jude was a terrible, terrible pick. Yep. And he has to just keep singing na 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 for like <laughs> ever. He's just totally given up by the end. Yeah. It was rough. All right. So now Girl in Yellow points out that wait a minute, Jesus is omnipotent and all-knowing, and he loves me, but my life still sucks most of the time. That doesn't seem right. Yep. And don't worry, Salty answers none of their questions and is just like, the Bible. Yep. Yeah, the kids are like, yeah, but hold on, it doesn't make sense why I would suffer so much if God was all-knowing and all... Hold on a second, wait, wait, and he's like, the Bible is an instruction book that tells you how to live. Yeah, and the, the kids try to help him out, so they're like, Oh, so you're saying the 
the Bible can help me love my sister even when I'm mad at her. And he's like, I can knock you down for a couple of days. And if you get up, you're fine. It's okay. <laughs> no, no problem. Your uterus will fall out. if you- Birth of a nation told me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then one, the one little girl who, by the way, seems about ready to strangle her fucking sister over taking her fucking toys. She's like, all right, you know what? I'll love my goddamn sister, but if I don't get into heaven for it, I am coming for you, you goddamn anthropomorphized book. <laughs> Fahrenheit 451. You hear me, motherfucker? <laughs> I, I even know the temperature. <laughs> I understood that pun about birth of a nation, you motherfucker. <laughs> You're next. Yeah, but it just so happens uh, to come up in that conversation that God uh, has the whole world in his hands. <laughs> Ran out of original material for Salty the Songbook. Uh, clearly, yeah. They, they, the, the songs are nine repeated words, and they still couldn't manage to make 24 minutes worth of them. So all the kids start singing a whole world in his hands. They're throwing up these little globe beach balls, but the water part is see-through, so they look like some kind of horrifying bug egg or some shit yep yep absolutely yeah and there's there's a tiny little version of salty the songbook here like fucking quato it was <laughs> yes. Yes. terrifying that is the child he talked about earlier maybe yeah okay possibly unclear also i and i have to point this out like Salty goes the fuck off in this one, right? <laughs> As though the actor is showing off that he can out sing these little kids. Like, because, I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> of course you can. Whole world in his hands. I was like, if Salty goes into an Aretha Franklin riff at the end of this thing, I am converting to Christianity. This is the season finale. All right, but so then we kick off the final scene with a reprise of the kid that got the sperm dumped on him earlier. Okay, this is so fucking insane. Yep. They run over to Salty and they're like, Josh is building his house on the sand again. So they run over there and Salty's like, Josh, are you a fucking Jew? Yeah, right. You didn't decide to become a dirty fucking Muslim, <laughs> did you? <laughs> and no, no, Josh is like, no, I want the goop. Give me the goop all over my face. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. Okay. And we actually end this <laughs> yes, children's it gets worse. musical with Salty. So, yeah, that kid gets fucking cum gooped again. Gooped again. But we end with Salty getting a money shot from 10 kids of yellowish white goop. That's ex- yep. literally what... What I watched, I watched this. They surround him and throw, by their own claim, vanilla pudding at his face as the camera zooms in. And his name is Salty, people. Salty. Salty. Yes. Yes. We get the Bukaki reference. It is unmistakable. So, uh, any, any moral to the story that you guys could tease Absolutely out? Absolutely not. Uh, Salty's not a cum dodger. <laughs> So, okay, that's good to know, though. All right. So on that note, we're going to shove Salty back on the shelf long enough for Eli to hopefully forget about him altogether. But I'm sure he'll remember him again for another God Awful Mini. Before we dissipate tonight, I want to remind you that Vacation or No, we're still going to have all new stuff for you every week this month. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our Sister Show's Hot Friend God Awful Moves, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even new episode of our Half Sister Show Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this show wouldn't be able to hold its head up high in the list if I neglected to thank Keith Enright for being as solid as a rock. I need to thank Eli Bosnick for being a different but also good consistency. I need to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lusions for putting up with me for even more than normal this past week. And I also want to thank Lib for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. If you'd like to learn more about the Cinderella podcast, make sure to check the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best bipeds, Night Owl 1090, Wild Matt, Jessica, Don't Ask My Name, AJ, Jonah, and Justin, Jeff, and Tanner. Night Owl, Wild Matt, and Jessica, who are so sexy, Potter Stewart isn't sure if he'll know porn when he sees it anymore. Don't Ask AJ and Jonah, whose IQs have more O's than a phone sex operator, and Justin, Jeff, and Tanner, whose cocks are so massive they have Lagrange points. Together, these nine naughty non-believers nudged our net worths northward this week by 
giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you earn only access to an extended ad free version of every episode, or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but fuck if you're going to give money to people who take vacations, you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review, telling a friend about the show, and following at PAATPod on Twitter. Illegal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robson, has our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, we'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scalingatheist.com. We didn't think to record extra outtakes and shit. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.